Did you know that the five years preceding December of 2019, that 80% of large cap funds actually underperform the S&P 500? So how do you invest to match the S&P 500 with low cost and with low input, low stress from you? Well, today we're gonna look at how to do that through index funds. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Aaron. And today we're gonna to talk about index funds. One of the best investments out there for every single investor. But first, if you haven't read the book, A Random Walk on Wall Street, I really encourage you to do so because it's a fantastic book. But the author of that book actually wanted to take a look at index funds versus actively managed funds. So he conducted the study from about 1970 to 2000 where an investor each had $10,000 to invest, one in an index fund and one in an actively managed fund. Now the person that invested in the index fund actually outperformed the person that invested in an actively managed fund by $140,000 over that investment time frame. That is huge, $140,000 difference on a $10,000 investment over 30 years, that's a massive difference. And that means that every single investor needs to be taking a real hard look at index funds and make sure you're incorporating them into your portfolio. So today we're gonna look at some of the best index funds that you can buy through Fidelity to make your full index fund portfolio. First, we need to understand what an index fund actually is. So an index and an index fund are two separate things. First, there's an index, such as the S&P 500, and then there's an index fund, which seeks to mirror the index. So an index fund can either be an ETF or a mutual fund, and you will be buying the index fund not the index. And this is a pretty important thing to know that the index is actually separate from the index fund and many different funds can be based to just mirror the same index and many are. Vanguard has its own index funds, Fidelity has its own index funds, the list goes on and on, but a lot of these funds still mirror the same index. So the first step in really figuring out our index fund portfolio is to figure out our risk allocation. How much risk do we wanna take on? One of the best ways to do this as a broad measure that can basically just apply to everyone is to take the number 100 and subtract your age from that. So I'm 25 years old, 100 minus 25, we're left with 75. So 75 will be our percentage that we can allocate towards equities and then the remaining 25% would normally be allocated to bonds. Now this is a very broad measure. I actually believe that as a young person you should take on more risk I like to be 100% in equities because that's what my risk preference allows. But as a broad measure, taking 100, subtracting your age, will give you a really good idea of how much risk you should take on and allocate towards equities. So now that we have an idea of how to figure out your risk preferences, now we can look at the individual investments within that risk profile. So your investments within equities and your investments within bonds. And I think one of the best ways to do this is actually just piggyback off large companies that have already spent billions of dollars doing research and just follow their models that they've already done. I'm sure you've heard of the app Acorns and Betterment. Well, you can go into these apps, go to their portfolio section, and then look through their asset allocation models from conservative all the way to risky. And this is exactly what I did to model one of my portfolios. If you go to Acorns right now, go to their most aggressive portfolio and look at the percentages that they have for each risk classification. So I actually did this for you. So right now, Acorns has a risk classification in their most aggressive portfolio of 90% to stocks and 10% to bonds. And within that 90% to stocks, they allocate 40% to US large cap companies, 20% to US small cap companies, 20% to international developed markets, then 10% to emerging markets, and then the remaining 10% to real estate. So this is within their aggressive portfolio, and you can see there's actually no bonds in here. It's 90% stocks, and that remaining 10% is just in real estate. And this is the portfolio that I've used with Acorns, and I started using Acorns in, I think it was high school, either high school or college, and I would deposit just some money in there every single week, and it actually built up to several thousand dollars over a few years and it was completely mindless. So that's another side tip that if you wanna start investing and you don't have a big chunk of money to put aside right now, just start with Acorns doing $10 a week, $20 a week, basically just small amounts every single week and over time it'll build up to several thousand dollars, I guarantee it. So on the flip side, Acorns most conservative portfolio looks very, very different. 
So for Acorn's most conservative portfolio, they have 50% to US large cap stocks, 9% to US small cap stocks, 5% to emerging market stocks, and then 40% to US bonds. That's a huge percentage in US bonds. Then they have 20% in corporate bonds, and then 11% in real estate. And we can see now with this portfolio, there's a massive weighting in bonds because it's a very conservative portfolio. So this is really meant for the older investor or an investor who really does not like to take on risk at all. And that's perfectly fine. It's completely up to the investor to determine how much risk they want to take. But this is not the portfolio for me because I like to take on more risk and I just love the stock market. So I like to be invested mainly in the stock market. All right, guys. So now the moment that we've all been waiting for the Fidelity Index Fund portfolio. Here are the Fidelity Index Funds that you can invest in to develop your Fidelity Index Fund portfolio. So how I went about picking these Fidelity Index Funds to invest in is the first rule was I wanted to pick something that was very low cost or no cost. So all of these index funds are extremely low cost or no cost to keep fees at a minimum because that's extremely important and will make a massive difference over the lifetime of your investment. It can be hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions if your investment grows to be that big, which it definitely could. So the second factor was that I wanted to pick one index fund for each of the asset classes that I listed above. So large cap stocks, small cap stocks, bonds, international markets, and emerging markets. So the first Fidelity Index Fund is FNILX. This is a US large cap fund with a zero expense ratio. So you're not gonna pay anything and this will give you exposure to large US stocks. The second Fidelity Index Fund is FSSNX, and this has an expense ratio of 0 0.026 and this gives you exposure to US small cap stocks. The next one is FZILX. This has no expense ratio and will give you exposure to international stocks and emerging market stocks. So the next Fidelity Index Fund to invest in is FSRNZ. This will give you exposure to real estate and has an expense ratio of 0 0.07. So by buying this, you're basically gonna get exposure to a bunch of different REITs under this fund. So last but not least is we have a Fidelity Bond Index Fund, FXNAX. This fund will give you exposure to both corporate bonds and US government bonds with an expense ratio of 0 0.025. So still very cheap and get, will give you broad exposure to corporate bonds and government bonds within one fund. So the bonus one and done fund that you can buy and hold for the next 30 years to build your wealth over decades is FZROX. This is a Fidelity total market fund. It'll give you exposure to all the stocks within the US and you'll pay no expenses on it. So this is a free fund you can hold for 30 years to build your wealth for the future. And then you don't need to spend your time worrying about your investments at all. Just one fund, let it sit there, let it do its thing, and you can go do something else. All right guys, so that's it. Now you know how to set up your index fund portfolio. You know how much to allocate towards equities, you know how much to allocate towards bonds. You know the exact fidelity index funds to invest in to set up your portfolio. If you like this video, drop a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this every single week. I hope I see you next week, but until then, I'm Aaron. Peace.